All right, guys, in the last video, we took three LEDs and we sequentially turned them on one after another after another. Uh, the next thing we're going to do in this video, Arduino tutorial number six, uh, is we're going to look at a signal coming into the Arduino. So we're going to make use of the digital read instruction. And in addition to the digital read, we're also going to be printing to what's called the serial monitor. So we can actually visualize what's going on with that input signal going into our Arduino. The components that we need for this guy should be in your starter kit. So you should have a momentary push button. Uh, you're going to make use of a 10 kilo ohm resistor. And here's the color code for that guy. It's brown, black, and then orange. And then you're going to need assorted jumper wires to make this guy work. All right. And as in previous videos, I'm going to make use of this Tinkercad. So if you need to follow along with me, you can go to www.tinkercad.com. And you're going to come down here to circuits, create a new circuit. And I've already developed this guy, so I'll open this guy up. And so here we have everything that we need. We have our 10K ohm resistor. We've got our push button. We've got our Arduino Uno. So all of those components are found here under components. And here you can find your resistor. There's your push button. And below here, there's your Arduino uh, Uno, and then you can bring this in, you can change it to whatever Arduino you're working with. Okay, in addition to that, we have our jumper wires. So let's slowly go through the connections here, guys. So let's start off with the 5 volts output from the Arduino. So I have a jumper wire going from the 5 volts output right here. So from this terminal, I'm going up, and I'm going to this rail right here. So I'm going to make this positive rail right here, 5 volts. Okay, you notice that all the way along there I have continuity. So as soon as I bring a jumper into this bad boy right here, then everything gets the same potential. Okay, so that's my 5 volts. I need the ground right here. So there's my ground terminal right there. And I have a jumper wire going from that ground terminal to this rail right here. And as soon as I bring it to any of these terminals here, then the entire rail is sitting at 0 volts. Okay, so I have positive 5 volts here, and I have 0 volts right here. In addition to that, I have uh, a jumper here going from terminal number 2 to one side of my push button. Okay, so make sure that you place the push button uh, like this, where it is sitting uh, right across from, like on either side of the breadboard. If you place this bad boy like this, then the terminals here on this rail and this rail will short out uh, either side. It should still work fine in the way that we've set it up, but it's just easier if you set it up like this. No way that you can short out any of your terminals. Okay, so I have uh, a jumper wire going from terminal 2 to one side of my push button. And you can see that that rail right there has continuity. And then over here on the other side of the push button, I'm having that come down and referencing my positive rail for my 5 volts. Okay, so I have, let's follow this through. I have 5 volts going here to this rail. That 5 volts is available right here on this terminal, or this terminal here of my push button. And when I press that push button, then the 5 volts will transfer over and be applied to terminal number 2 of my Arduino. I then have uh, a jumper here from the negative to the ground and that way right here uh, the other side of the push button will be at zero volts when I haven't pressed the push button okay so I've got a pull down resistor here to make sure that that terminal right there is at zero volts when I haven't pressed the push button when I press the push button then the 5 volt is going to transfer over and transfer back over to terminal 2 on my digital inputs of my Arduino so component-wise, what do we need? We need a push button, a resistor, a 10K ohm resistor, and we need one, two, three, four different conductors or jumpers in order to make this work. Okay, so now let's open up our Arduino IDE and we'll jump right into the programming to make this guy work. Okay, guys, so now you've opened up your Arduino IDE. Let me show you where I'm getting all the ideas for these initial videos. If you go here to File and you go down to Examples, and in our case, we're going to go to, easy now, we're going to go to basics. And we are learning how to do the digital read. So if we go down here, there is the blink that we did earlier. 
And this is the one we're going to do right now, the digital read serial. So I'm going to click on this guy right here, and it's going to provide me with the example code in order to get this to work. Okay, so everything is here. Um, and what you can do is you can take a look at this, and it provides, says it's, this example is, code is in the public domain. So everything is available. Let's just open up our browser here. Everything's available right here at this tutorial for the digital read. So there's no need for me to reinvent the wheel here. Everything is here. Uh, there is a sketch here from Fritzing on how to hook it up. Basically the same diagrams I showed you just a few seconds ago on the Tinkercad.com. I like this one a little bit better because we can uh, we can drop in our code and we can get this to simulate. Uh, but everything is available here and there's a description of everything that we're going to do uh, in this circuit. Everything's there for us. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to build this guy up. And let's open this guy back up. Uh, so we're going to learn how to do this serial begin. We'll do our pin mode. Uh, we'll do everything in the void setup and then do our void loop. But I've watched videos before where um, the individual just highlights the text and then just talks you through that text. I'd rather just write the text in. And what I want you to do is grab a piece of paper. Um, like basically what I have is just like a, like a duotang or a folder that um, as I watch videos, I'm writing down the exact code that they're doing. And I'm walking through and making notes uh, just so I can laser etch that into my mind. If I'm just listening to the video, um, or if you're just listening to me talk right now, you're not going to take it all in. So we're going to start from the beginning. We're going to write down exactly what they have here. Um, but I want you to follow along as well and stop and start the video and write down the code as I input it onto the screen here. Okay, so let's bring this. I'm actually just going to grab this bad boy right here uh, and put it onto a different screen so I can take a look at it as I'm talking to you. And let's open up a new... Arduino sketch here. Uh, so this is what we have every time that we open up a new sketch. We have the void setup and we have the void loop. Remember that the void setup uh, runs once and the void loop is going to run repeatedly over and over and over. So what I'm going to do, and you might want to do this as well, um, is if you have two screens, uh, bring your other, like the actual sketch that you're going off of onto one screen, and then you can type it into your Arduino IDE, and it's the same as writing it down. You're physically typing in the letters, and it will start to laser etch into your mind as you do that. Now, if we're going to do a comment, you can see here that the double backslash will provide us with a comment on one line. If we're going to do a comment on a number of lines, we can do a backslash and then a star. And then the Arduino says, um, all right, well, that everything is going from there on is going to then be a comment on numerous lines there. So uh, we'll start off here and we're going to label this guy digital read serial. And we have a description of this guy. So it reads a digital input. On in this case we're going to look at pin two. Okay, why is it print two? Just just because that's the pin that they've decided to use uh, in this example. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to print the result to the serial monitor. So we'll talk about the serial monitor in a minute. Uh, on that previous one that we looked at, it says this example code is in the public domain. So that's what's so cool is that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. I don't have to create my own code here. It's already there for me to look at. I can take it, I can change it as I want, as I wish, um, and make it do exactly what I need to on my Arduino. Okay, the the domain that we're looking at, let's just grab that. Okay, so we'll drop that in here. There we go. Uh, and now once we've finished off this comment section now, um, we had a backslash and then a star. And in order to close that up, we need a star and then a backslash. So the Arduino will look at this and it'll say, all right, um, this is a comment, and I can just ignore everything that's here. It's a multi-line comment. Uh, it means nothing to me, but just provides um, those of us looking at the code with a little bit more background. And if you have 
uh, you know, a diagram or a tutorial that matches with your code, then you can provide the link within your Arduino IDE. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to set some integers. So what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, INT for integer. You can see that it goes blue as soon as I put in the INT. Uh, and then we're going to label a global variable. I'm going to use bumpy text, bumpy text in that I've got push and then my next word here has gone with a capital B, so push button. Uh, and I'm going to make that equal to, I'll put space here, equal to pin two. And remember at the end of every line, we're going to put a semicolon there. Okay, if we want to put in a little comment here to tell our readers what we're actually doing, then what we've done here is that we're declaring uh, the global variable. And we just used a push button. And we're using that on pin two. So we're creating an integer, a global variable called push button. And push button from now on is going to correspond to pin number two. And that's the only integer we're going to do so far. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is the void setup. So again, the void setup, you put your code in here and it runs once now. And we have the open parentheses and we have the closed parentheses for the void setup. Okay, so I'm now going to come in here and I'm going to use this instruction, serial.begin. Okay, now look at the, the way that I've done that. Capital S, E-R-I-A-L dot begin. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, 9600 and what that does is that initializes the serial commu communication at 9600 bits per second and that communication is going on between your Arduino Beautiful. Okay. Uh, I may want to put the, the actual Arduino in here in a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another line here. I'm going to put in double backslash and I'm going to take a portion of this and move it over. So I'm going to grab this part right here. Cut this out, put it down here. Beautiful. And then if I want, I can put the Arduino in here once we get everything rock and rolling. So that serial.begin9600 is from the Arduino libraries. So by Arduino libraries, what I mean is that if we go back to our browser and we go here to the digital read serial, uh, within this Arduino homepage at our www.arduino.cc, there are a number of libraries in there for communications, for liquid crystal displays. Everything is already done for us. Uh, so as people create different libraries, they put them open. It's an open source platform. So they put them there so that we can make use of it. So this allows us to talk to um, our computer and to our Arduino and have that serial communication back and forth between them. Okay. If you want to know more about any of the topics that I'm talking about during this tutorial, if you scroll, go to this page and you scroll down to the bottom, all the different topics that we're talking about are available right here if you want a little bit more information on each of them. So, but we've got the, the serial communication now. Uh, we're doing it at 9600 bits per second. And again, keep track of the, the fact that the S is a capital and there is a, a, a dot or a period between the serial and the begin. Okay, we're gonna put that here in the void setup because that only needs to be done once. Uh, and the last thing we need to do here is we need to do our pin mode. So we're going to do pin mode, and I believe we covered this in a previous video. So the pin mode is there for our push button. So again, above, we created this global variable, this integer global variable right here, push button. Okay, again, keeping the same spelling and the uppercase B there. Uh, that push button right there, I have to make it as an input. So I'm going to move comma, and I'm going to go caps locks. 
put input, and you can see there it goes blue. Then I'm going to close the brackets, and then I'm going to put a semicolon at the end there. And that's all that I need to do in my void setup. Remember, the void setup runs once, so I'm going to set up my serial begin, so my communication between my Arduino and the computer. And the next thing that I'm going to do once is I'm going to set the pin mode, and I'm saying the push button, which I've already declared at pin number two, is going to be an input. Okay, just to put as much information on there as, as possible, we'll put double backslash here, and this declares push button to be an input. Beautiful. So that's everything for the void setup. I don't really like the way that this is looking, though. So I'm going to cut this bad boy right here. I'm going to paste it about, uh, and then I'm going to just drop this guy down just so I can have a little bit of space in between my integer and then uh, my void setup now. And then I'm going to bring all of this together uh, and try and keep these guys just indented a bit just so I can see what's going on in the void setup. Okay, it looks good. So I have my integer being declared there. Then I've got my void set up here. I've got my serial begin. I've got my pin mode. I've got my open parentheses. I've got my close parentheses. And I'm ready to rock and roll now. Uh, down here for the void loop, again, I'm going to, I don't like where this is. I like having it above. Okay. Move it over just a touch. And we'll put a space there just to separate them. Okay, so now in the void loop, what we're going to do is we're going to put in this instruction right here. Okay, so we're going to put in int for another integer, uh, and we're going to put in button state here. Let's put a space here. B-U-T-T-O-N, bumpy text. So we're just putting the S as a capital there. So button state, and we're going to say that that is equal to our digital read. going to be reading, we're going to be digitally reading our push button. Remember that our push button is our global variable from above that is tied in with pin number two. So we're going to create another integer down here in the void loop here that's going to run repeatedly. And this button state is going to be the state of the button, whether it's going to be a one or a zero. We're going to make use of this digital read here, and the digital read is going to read that input. If there are zero volts being applied to pin number two, or what we're calling push button right now, then the digital read is going to read a zero. If there is five volts being applied to my pin number two, which again we've called push button, then that digital read is going to read a one. So let's see if we can summarize that below. So the double backslash here, uh, and this is going to uh, read the status. Okay, so it's going to read the status of the input push button and provide us with either a 0 or a 1. Looks good. Okay, let's put that down here so we can have a little bit more room in case we need to put the actual Arduino on the side there. Looks good. Okay, so reads the status of the input push button and provides either a 0 or a 1. Beautiful. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to make use of another instruction. Let's move this over so it's in line with our integer here. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make use of this. Serial.print. And we're put, going to put ln. Serial.println. Okay. What are we going to print to the serial monitor? Well, we're going to print the state of the button. And we have used this guy right here, the, the integer button state, in order to describe the state of that push button. So we're going to put button exactly the same as we have above, capital S-T-A-T. -T. We'll close the brackets there. And then at the end of every line, we're going to put that semicolon. Now what that does, we've already set up our serial communications up here between our Arduino and the computer. 
and this is going to print to the serial monitor. So let's just put a description in here. Uh, prints out the status. of the push button to the serial monitor. And I'll show you what the serial monitor is in a couple seconds. And the last thing we need to do here before we hit this closed parentheses is we need to provide a delay. Why do we need to pro provide a delay? It just provides us with a little bit of stability in the loop here. So. We're going to put a delay in. We don't need a massive delay. We're just going to put in 10 milliseconds. And then again, at the end, we'll put this semicolon here. That just provides us with a delay before it goes up uh, and starts this void loop again. Okay, so our void loop is here in that we're uh, creating this integer button state. The button state is going to be a digital read, either a zero or a one, of our push button. The push button is our global variable that we created up here that corresponds to pin number two. If pin number two has zero volts applied to it, then the digital read is going to provide a zero output. If the pin number two has five volts DC applied to it, then it's going to provide us with a one. We need to send that to the serial monitor. So in order to do that, we're using serial.println. We're using the button state, the integer that we, that we declared up here. And then we're creating a 10 millisecond delay before we start that all over again above. Okay, so let's verify that and see if everything is cool. We need to save this again. So let me just pause while I save it. Okay, it's now compiling the sketch here. Again, if this is the first time that you're creating this, compiling that sketch, it may take a little bit of time. Beautiful. Okay, we got green all the way along. Um, let me see whether I am talking to my Arduino. So we have... Um, tools. I'm talking to my Arduino Uno. And am I talking to COM3? Yes, I'm talking to COM3 because I can see that check mark right there. All right, so let's download this to our Arduino and we'll see what comes up. So it's compiling the sketch now, uploading to the Arduino. Hey, that was fast. Everything's good. Okay, let me do a picture in picture and I'll show you how this guy is working. Okay, so now we have downloaded our program to the Arduino board. Uh, we see no difference on the Arduino right now, uh, but that's because what we're doing is we're looking at the serial monitor. So what we need to do is come over here to the right-hand side, the upper right-hand side where it says serial monitor, and click on this bad boy right here. Okay, that opens up this window right here, and you can see that there are zeros consistently going down. I have an auto scroll right now, so you can see here that there's consistently a zero being inputted to pin number two. Okay, that's because there's zero volts on pin number two. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to press the push button, and when we press the push button, then you will see that it turns from a zero to a one. There we go. So at that point, we have five volts being applied to pin number two. We're looking at that five volts and we're outputting either a zero or a one to the serial monitor. So without pressing the push button, we have zero volts. Pressing the push button, we have five volts and that five volts is now being expressed as a one. Excellent. Looks good, guys. I want you to do one last thing before we finish this. Uh, in your program here, I want you to get rid of the LN and then download that or upload that to your Arduino. Okay, it's done uploading. Open up your serial monitor again. So look at this, how this does now. So it's putting the zeros all on one line. So without the LN, so again, let me just bring this up. Uh, without the LN here, then it consistently brings our zero all the way across on the same line. If I press the button here, it will change to a one. So one's right across now. Let it go, we have a zero. Press it, we have a one. Uh, but that's a little bit annoying. If we want it to see it a little bit easier, then we'll most likely want to put in LN. So serialprint.ln. Again, we'll upload that to the Arduino, and we'll see how that changes on the serial monitor here. There we go. Beautiful. Again, we'll press the push button, and there's your ones. Nice. Okay, so now we're building up to cooler and cooler circuits. Now we have uh, a push button that can now provide an input to our Arduino. 
we can then look at that input and then based on the status of that input, we can then decide what the outputs are going to do. But we'll build up that to that on the next videos. All right, guys, thanks for your patience. We'll see you on the next video. Uh, next one I think we're going to do, uh, we've done the, the digital read, uh, so it would make sense to do the analog read next. Okay, keep going on the playlist, guys. We'll see you on the next video.